if you can't hear what I'm saying, um, I couldn't even hear myself. This is the loudest sound you could possibly conceive. And, as it turns out, the cleanest. Now, the most amazing thing is that that cloud up there, which was generated by the engine, is just a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. It's water vapour. And in about an hour's time, someone in Mississippi is going to get wet washing. It will actually rain. I told you. It's raining. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh. NASA's playing God. It's making its own weather. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. The President, uh, upon my recommendation, as Chairman of the Space Council, sent a message to the Congress two days after we got back. He said that he was sending it and asked me, he said, do you think that the timing of it is about right? And I said, yes, I think the timing is very excellent. But when I came to this town 30 years ago, and President Roosevelt had something that really meant a lot to the people, he would take that message and he would walk down Pennsylvania Avenue himself and look straight in the eyes of that Congress and give it to him in person. And the President said he thought that was a good idea, and he did. And as a result, I think the people in the Congress are going to support him. And that message calls for new frontiers, new visions. It calls for us taking the steps now that will make us no longer second in space and in size. It lays the predicate and the foundation for a space communication satellite that will permit the people of the world to see one television program at the same time throughout the world. Think about that kind of communication and think about the opportunity that will provide. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather, and he who controls the weather will control the world. It lays the predicate for the steps that are necessary to send a man to the moon. It lays the steps that are necessary to provide a nuclear rocket that will produce benefits that are so unlimited that I couldn't tell you about them if I had all afternoon. But that's the kind of a world that you're living in. Despite the cost, however, NASA does need to test these engines once in a while. So they built this place in the wetlands of Mississippi. The first thing they installed was a huge loudspeaker, through which they played white noise to simulate the sound of a rocket. They then sent a number of trucks in different directions out into the wilderness, and the drivers were ordered to stop when the noise levels became acceptable. This gave them an imaginary boundary line, and anyone living on the inside of it was offered a simple choice. Stay, and you'll never hear another television program as long as you live. Or take the NASA shilling and get out. 
no one stayed. And NASA ended up with exactly what it wanted. 125,000 acres of nothing. They even had to move five cemeteries because the noise they were planning on making would wake the dead. if you can't hear what I'm saying. Um, I couldn't even hear myself. This is the loudest sound you could possibly conceive. And, as it turns out, the cleanest. Now, the most amazing thing is that that cloud up there, which was generated by the engine, is just a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. It's water vapour. And in about an hour's time, someone in Mississippi is going to get wet washing. It will actually rain. I told you. It's raining. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh. NASA's playing God. It's making its own weather. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world.